In this Q&A video supported by the Laseco Group, we're going to answer the question, what do I need to know about asbestos as a tradesperson? Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of health and safety in construction. They can be viewed individually, or you can click in the link in the description below to view them as part of our free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate to prove you've completed the course. I'm Joe Hammond, and I'm going to be looking at the dangers associated with asbestos and where we might find it. So what is asbestos? Well, asbestos is a naturally occurring fibrous material that is still mined to this day in open cast mines. In fact, one of the biggest exporters of asbestos is Canada, and it sends asbestos to places like India and Africa who still use it in their industries. Now, the three most common types of asbestos that we tend to come across are chrysotile, which is white asbestos, amosite, which is brown asbestos, and crocodolite, which is blue asbestos. Now, I do often get asked which asbestos is more dangerous, with people believing that blue asbestos is more dangerous than the others. Well, truth is, they're all equally as dangerous. There are content levels that we could get into, but asbestos is asbestos. It doesn't matter of the colour, it is just not good to breathe in and be exposed to. So how is asbestos dangerous? Well, the issue is asbestos is the fibers and those fibers are microscopic. And if we breathe them in, they can enter our lungs and cause a whole host of damage. Imagine if you will, tiny barb-like shards rolling around your lungs. And as you breathe, each one of those shards are stabbing away at that lung tissue. Now, because our bodies are amazing, our lungs repair themselves, but in doing so, they create scar tissue. Scar tissue by its very nature gets tighter. So what happens is your lungs over a period of time slowly constrict themselves. And after that period of time, it gets too much for the body and our breathing will just fail. You can almost imagine that dying of asbestos related illnesses is like slowly suffocating over a long period of time. It's a terrible affliction and increases our chances of catching diseases like lung cancer, methothelioma and asbestosis, all of which are terminal. There is no known cure. And unfortunately, electricians are one of the highest risk groups for coming into contact with asbestos containing materials or ACMs. Now, you may now be thinking that you want to avoid risk of exposure to asbestos. So where was it used? Well, unfortunately, it was used everywhere. Steel frames, guttering, rainwater pipes, boiler insulation, pipe lagging, wall, ceiling and door linings, corrugated roofing, ceiling, floor tiles. They even used it to make header tanks that went into loft spaces. Electrically, it was used in flash guards. So in the old type fuses where you would have had a fuse wire, they would have had asbestos ribbon within them to protect against arcing and flash. It was used everywhere. And that's because there's no better material out there than asbestos. It's as fine as silk, but as strong as steel. It's corrosion proof, fireproof, it doesn't degrade. It's an incredible material. It could be woven into string, into sheet, into cement, everything really. A particular area of risk for electricians though is textured coated ceilings. Now it was common practice that asbestos would be added to plaster as it was applied to the ceiling because it created a fire barrier between the different floor levels. Now, old Artex, it was almost guaranteed to contain asbestos. Now, imagine the job, if you will. You go out to replace a ceiling rose or to fit a new light fitting. And as you're removing the fitting and the two screws come away from the ceiling, particles of dust will be raining down. And there's nothing really you can do about it. It's just dusty work. But there are protective measures we can take to protect ourselves. We can use cork or just keep that area wet to minimize the risk of asbestos fibers being dispersed. But the key thing we should be doing is not exposing that risk at all. So if we do come across a property where we suspect it might have an ACM or asbestos containing material, we should be looking to get it sampled just to make sure we don't put anyone else or ourselves at risk. So what should you do if you suspect asbestos? Stop what you're doing. Don't continue with the work and find out if that material contains asbestos or not. If you work for a company, you need to give your boss a ring to see if there's any asbestos registers somewhere or if surveys have been carried out. If you're self-employed, well, 
you can't take that risk and you can't risk the accidental dispersion of asbestos fibers, certainly not in the customer's property. So you need to get it surveyed. If it looks like asbestos, assume that it is. Report it, then it's down to the person in charge to investigate whether it's an asbestos containing material. Asbestos is a killer and an evil dust. It doesn't kill you straight away as it does this over a period of time. We have technically reached the peak of asbestos related deaths, but it is still out there. We find it in our buildings, all over industry. So please be careful with what you're doing. Be cautious with the work that you're doing. And if in doubt, stop what you're doing. You can find more information on the Health and Safety Executive website. So there we go. Some guidance on the subject of asbestos. To find out what you need to know about safe access on site, check out the video here or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate as well. I've been Joe Hammond. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Bye bye for now.